Hey guys, Pete here. Today I'm going to talk about Raised by Wolves Season 2 theories and about some of the answers that showrunner Aaron Guzikowski put out there and all the post-finale interviews he's doing. I've been thinking about the big picture of the first season and reading everything that's out there for the past few days. And man, what a rabbit hole. In this video, I'm going to look at the unanswered questions, fill in some of the blanks based on the answers he's provided, discuss what I think, my personal theories, and then mention some of the more popular fan theories that are out there and point you in the direction of those. Obviously, this will contain spoilers from everything I just mentioned, so if you haven't finished the first season of Raised by Wolves, then this video won't be for you. I mentioned in my Ending Explained video that there were a lot of unanswered questions that the finale didn't answer directly. In the time since I made that video, Guzikowski did address some of those, providing some details that are pretty important and that help in trying to figure out where the story might go. The central mystery is the idea of Saul, and this manifestation of a voice that different characters hear at different times, which is manipulating them into doing what it wants. We don't know if this is cosmic slash spiritual, a higher being as it were, if it's alien, or if it's some sort of evolved artificial intelligence. It might be a while until we find out the answer to this, and I think one of the things the show is doing well is pointing out how belief systems affect how we take in information. In a story that pits two factions against each other, believers and non-believers, atheists and what have evolved into religious fanatics, the characters try to explain the unexplainable things that happen on Kepler through the lens of their beliefs. As viewers, we pick up on references to mythology and religious stories we know. If you go on the Raised by Wolf subreddit, you'll come across a lot of interesting theories pointing out parallels in this way. And while these are a lot of fun to read and have a lot of interesting stuff in them to think about, I don't think the point is that the show is a retelling of those. Instead, I think using all those references puts us in the same frame of mind as the characters as we try to make sense of the mysteries. This is pretty much central to the way I'm looking at things, and so I won't really go into the mythology and the religious references, but I would encourage if you're interested in that stuff for you to go check out the subreddit. Let's look at the things Saul has done. The first character we know who was manipulated was Otho. The voice came to him in the Sim on the Mithraic Ark's 12 year long journey to Kepler. It influenced him to rape women while they were in stasis, commanding him to be fruitful. It was mentioned that Otho probably committed abuses before that, and that indicates that he was chosen based on the voice knowing things about him and his history, which it had to have learned while he was in the sim. This led to Tempest being impregnated against her will, which means she'll be giving birth to his child in the second season. It's possible that the voice also led Tally, one of the children, to the pit where she fell in. But even if not, it appeared as Tally after she died to manipulate people. She appeared to father, leading him away from protecting the children. Apparition Tally appeared to Campion when he was held prisoner by the Mithraic, telling him to join his dead siblings because they missed him. Also, it appeared to Paul to lead him to where he fell in a pit. Mother was able to save him, but in the process he lost Mouse who fell before Paul could reach him. Eventually his pet returned in an equally mysterious way. Ghost Tally appeared to Mother to lead her to the simulation pod where she was able to access her memory archives and learn about her time with her creator, Campion Sturgis. Then, it was able to use his likeness in its plot to impregnate her. The showrunner explained that process in detail, saying, Something else got inside and downloaded her drive with information about how to build a new being. In essence, Mother is like a 3D printer. Her body starts to work on that digital information, and it decides that it needs more organic compounds. Because she's an android, her body could download that information and make something out of it. Her body was never designed to give birth, though, so it has to improvise a bit to get the thing out of her. At the Temple Relic, the voice spoke to Marcus, leading to Ambrose's burning. It continues to talk to Marcus, which leads him down the path to insanity. Then it stops talking to him, just as it did with Otho, and starts talking to his son, Paul. This is another detail that the showrunner mentioned. He said, There's some connection to be made in terms of who hears the voice and when, and how many. Really, I think only one person can hear it at a time. 
It leads Paul to the tarot cards and has him burn them. Then it tells him to sabotage the ship to keep them away from the tropical zone. Mouse leads him into a cave where he finds ancient cave paintings and it's really not 100% clear if that's directly related to the voice or not. Finally, it exposes the truth about Sue and Marcus' identities, which ends with her getting shot and Paul fleeing from the group and ending the season by himself. The fact that it knew the truth about Sue and Marcus, that they were really the atheist Mary and Caleb who killed his real parents, that's hard to explain considering they never told anyone. Mother figured it out, but that was related to their plastic surgery. However, we do know that it infected the Sim to get to Otho and then later Mother. So I think we can surmise that it could learn from their memories while they were in stasis because they were connected to the Sim. This is the biggest reason I tend to think there's advanced technology involved and why most of the theories I come up with involve AI manipulating things. While we haven't seen or have a explanation of the origin point of this artificial intelligence, it does seem like the kind of thing that could exist for generations and thousands and thousands of years. The voice's motivations aren't really clear beyond impregnating mother. I mean, that was obvious that it wanted that to happen. And then protecting her until the baby was born. We saw it tell Marcus not to kill her. I mean, it wanted Otho to be fruitful, but then also seemed to want Campion out of the picture and led Paul to fall into a hole. So there's not a straight line consistency there. But I do think that the monologue when it was talking to Mother and the Sim as Campion Sturgis is the closest thing to an honest explanation of what it's trying to accomplish. It doesn't seem to have a very high opinion of humans and their civilizations. My theory is that there's a cycle repeating of humans evolving to ultimately destroy themselves. I don't think we have enough information at this point to say when this started or how many times it's repeated, but we have seen that the main characters have all just fled Earth because it was in the process of being destroyed, and we get the idea that there was a complete civilization on Kepler that no longer is there. We did learn more details about the creatures on Kepler though, and the vision Mother saw when she scanned the tarot cards, I think these are clues to back up this idea. Guzikowski told the Stuck at Home podcast that Kepler used to be populated by humans. He said perhaps they were Neanderthals. He doesn't say that they were or that this is where Neanderthals came from necessarily, just perhaps they were Neanderthals and we saw the Neanderthal skull. Something happened to force these humans to hide underground. In that process, while hiding from the light, crawling around, hiding from whatever was on the surface, they adapted to their environment becoming less human and more like the version that we saw show up after the Ark crashed into the surface. The crash is the event that led to them showing back up. They had been hiding underground. He said that ancient humans and ancient serpents both existed on Kepler in the past at the same time. The creature that Mother killed is a member of a group that's less devolved and knows what happened in the past. The group, or at least the one we saw try to kill Mother, wants to stop it from happening again. It seems they were able to resist the evolutionary changes that the others experienced over generations. The tarot cards seem to be their way of remembering important information about the rise and fall of their civilization. He also filled in some details about that vision. He described that what we saw was a humanoid android that was there thousands of years ago. The androids were forced to wear what was essentially a birthing helmet as they were confined in the body cage. The original serpents that they gave birth to didn't fly because they weren't born from necromancers. When mother was impregnated, she passed down some of her attributes to the one she gave birth to, and that all sounds like a long, ongoing process of evolution. The snake she created is both synthetic and organic, a cross between the ancient serpents and the necromancers. This all adds up to me thinking that the voice is something that's been around for a very long time. Neanderthals lived on Earth until about 40,000 years ago. Their history goes back way further than that though, like hundreds of thousands of years. The fact that they lived here and on Kepler shows there must have been a connection between the two planets, but what that was isn't clear from the information that we have at this point. 
We do know that Kepler's ancient humans were creating serpents using androids. As of now, my guess is that creating these is what led to things falling apart. And that's why the tarot card that we've seen shows the birthing helmet ceremony. We also know that the humans on Earth that became the Mithraic learned about dark photon energy and how to build necromancers from their scriptures. It's a safe bet that these came from Kepler and possibly from whatever is behind the voice. With the local human population dying out, perhaps a different group was necessary to implement this new technology. After all, they were the catalysts for humanity's current move between planets, and using Mother to give birth to this new species of serpent seems like a next step in an evolution that started thousands of years ago. So we have two different human populations evolving on two different planets. We have them making technological advances and destroying themselves. They could be moving back and forth. I don't see like any clear evidence that life started on one planet or the other, like that there wasn't two different strands of humans evolving at the same time, but they seem to go from one planet to the other, and there's something in the background facilitating these advances in their technology. While each civilization knows nothing about the other one, they could be connected and being manipulated by the same force, or perhaps the same forces. At some point, if these characters that didn't devolve, as Father put it, if they remember and they kept that memory around for long enough and we see things like the cave paintings and the tarot cards with the visions that are saved inside them, perhaps they can be the key to actually stopping this thing from repeating the cycle over and over again. Or evolving to the next thing that's probably just going to destroy everything once again. On top of all of this, Aaron Guzankowski gave up a lot of other details in various interviews over the past few days. I think the podcast interview I mentioned earlier was the biggest information dump, so I'll put a link to that in the description. Here's some more of what he said there and in various websites like Newsweek, Decider, and Collider. He said there's something unique about this planet, and mother and father did literally travel through the center, the core of the planet. He didn't explain how the core was different, but did say the pits are like a subway system connecting different areas on the surface, like literally digging your way from one side to the other. He confirmed that mother, father, and Snakey Jr. did end up inside the tropical zone. He said it's protected by an electromagnetic field and is on a continental island, teasing that we'll see an ocean in season two. He mentioned that we'll get to experience things through the new group of atheists that arrived at the end in a few different articles, confirming that they hijacked their ark from the Mithraic while it was under construction, and mentioned that they'll be in a better position since they'll still have their tech and weapons with them when they arrive. He said the story won't jump ahead too far in time, which a lot of people were guessing since the actors that play Paul and Campion are both around 13 years old and probably are both due for a growth spurt. He said the story is more immediate and that a lot is going to happen on this planet in a short amount of time. He mentioned there will be flashbacks and that we might even see Earth in the story's present. It sounds like it's not completely destroyed, and he confirmed there are still necromancers there. He said they were left behind, most of them. The Mithraic obviously didn't want to bring any with them. They were done with them. They didn't trust them. So they left them on Earth, except for the one they found waiting for them on Kepler-22b. He also said that Marcus was forced to swallow both of the necromancer eyes. He has dark photon energy coursing through his veins as a result, mentioning that Mother can't weaponize without them, and that she'll probably be looking to get them back, whatever that means. He likes to mention the androids changing and experiencing emotional intelligence. He didn't give much away about how the separation from the children will affect them, or what they'll find in the tropical zone, though. I don't think it's crazy to guess that there may be remnants of a civilization, if not a populated area, still there. It could turn out that the cloak figures are there, and that's why they haven't changed as much. Or it could mean that there's Keplerians that are on, or have been on, a completely different path. Without knowing about the pits, and the way things are connected, or the electromagnetic field, really anything could be possible. Finally, he said we'll learn more about the dodecahedrons, or pentagonal temples as he calls them, and that there's five of them on the planet. Each of them is supposed to contain hidden answers to the ultimate Mithraic mysteries. I'm not sure we saw them discover the mystery, or really anything, at the first temple they found. 
He did mention Hunter's arm not burning was interesting, like it should have been burnt based on what we saw, and he teased that maybe something else happened to it. He didn't really elaborate on that or the vision that Marcus had of him with the snake for an arm. Those were the big takeaways, but there's actually more little details in there. These were the big things that jumped out that I jotted down in my notes. I am focused on this idea about how faith affects how we interpret things that we don't understand. I mean, we got a bunch of new characters all in a place where everything is somewhat unexplainable. I think the intelligence that's reaching out to them, that's talking to them, that's guiding them has existed for a lot longer than the current wave of humanity has but I'm not sure what created it or why it wanted to create a flying snake monster. I'm interested to see where it goes though, and I'm interested to hear what you think. So let me know in the comments. Do you think we're seeing repeating cycles of humans evolving just to destroy themselves? Or do you think it's something else? Is the voice cosmic? Is the voice AI? Is it alien? Would you call it a higher being? What do you think's going on there? What theories do you like? What are you hoping to see in season two? And what are your big questions after the season one finale? Let me know in the comments. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, guys. I will talk to you soon.